Thank you, PT. Friends, in 2011, Mr. Kalyan Banerjee was the president of Rotary International, and he initiated a program of South Asia Cooperation and Development. Under the aegis of that, we had a conference in Nepal on literacy. There, Mr. Kalyan Banerjee got up on stage and announced, looking at the enthusiasm of the 500 Rotarians there, he made an announcement, let us get total literacy in South Asia. Well, if he said it, we had no option. We are ready to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, to present his thoughts on total literacy, we have the author of this concept itself. May we introduce past president, Rotary International, Kalyan Banerjee. Past president of Rotary International, Rotarian Kalyan Banerjee, has been a member of Rotary since 1972. Kalyan has served Rotary as a director, Rotary Foundation trustee, committee and task force chair, International Assembly group discussion leader, president's representative and district governor. Kalyan has served as a member of the International Polio Plus Committee for many years and has attended international meetings with the World Health Organization and UNICEF in that capacity. As the past chair of Southeast Asia Regional Polio Plus Committee and the member of Rotary's International Polio Plus Committee, Kalyan spearheaded many of Rotary's novel initiatives which have given a new push to the polio eradication program in India. Kalyan is a major donor, benefactor and Bequest Society member and has also been awarded the Foundation Citation for Meritorious Service and its Distinguished Service Award. Driven by Kalyan's vision, the Rotary Club of Wapi, through its educational and medical trusts, has transformed the social infrastructure of Wapi. Kalyan is a director of United Phosphorus Limited, the largest Indian agrochemical manufacturer and the chair of United Phosphorus Limited, Bangladesh. He is a member of the Indian Institute of Chemical Engineers and the American Chemical Society, a past president of Wapi Industries Association and the former chair of Gujarat chapter of the Confederation of Indian Industry. He earned a degree in chemical engineering from the Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur. Kalyan's wife, Binota, is a social worker and the Inner Wheel Club member. They have two children and four grandchildren. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome past president of Rotary International, Rotarian Kalyan Banerjee. Honorable Dr. Pallam Raju, Union Minister for Human Resource Development, Honorable Minister Mr. Khusro from Pakistan, Senior Government Officers from South Asia, the giants of industry, the NGOs, UNICEF, Chair Shekhar Mehta, Director PT, distinguished guests, and my brothers and sisters in Rotary. It's a privilege and a pleasure both to be addressing you this morning in the presence of such a distinguished audience of the Minister of Education, HRD from India, and other South Asian countries. To add to the glitter, we have government officers, NGOs, industrial houses, and of course the Rotarians from India and Nepal, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka as well. As chair of Rotary International South Asia Initiative, it's my great honor to welcome you to this seminar on literacy in South Asia more specifically on the initiative to make South Asia fully literate by 2017. Now, I was aware that when I mentioned a date just four years away, there may be some skeptical looks and some shaking of heads, and perhaps too the spoken statements, it can't be done, not at least in that time frame. But taking a good heart and positive look at the situation which prevails in South Asia, and our countries today, what I want to put before all of us today is that it can perhaps get done 
if we plan out our scheme, if we put ourselves into a fast forward mode, if we all come together, the various groups present here today, and some who are not because they could not make it, and we all move ahead together. We do it in our own way and at our own speed, but we move together forward. And while I realize that we may not be able to achieve all that we set out to do by 2017, let me just say that let's begin. And even we may surprise ourselves. And if 2017 stretches a bit by a year or two, it'll still be a huge achievement. We have today Rotarians with us from all of South Asia. Sri Lanka, where are you? Sri Lanka, will you raise your hand, will you rise? Sri Lanka, rise, please rise. Give them an applause if you will. <laughs> Sri Lanka is already here, they are fully literate. Bangladesh, where are you? Will you please write? Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Pakistan, where is Pakistan? All the Rotarians from Pakistan. And then Nepal, where is Nepal? Will you please rise? Welcome, Nepal. Look at, their, look at their numbers. You know, they have all started out too, and we may be working it out. Detailed plans for each of these brother countries within the next two days. It's possible, it's doable, and that is why we are all gathered here this morning. Let's look at India in some detail now. I know the speakers after me will give you information of where we are state-wise and, of course, nationally. Suffice it to say that Kerala, do we have Rotarians from Kerala over here? Kerala Rotarians, please rise. They are almost the fully literate state in the India today. Congratulations. Karnataka, Tamil Nadu also. If you are there, please Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, rise. Okay, you are almost on their way, fully 80% plus. For the rest of us from India, well, the country is nationally 65 to 70 percent literate. So we have another three and a half years to get it done. It's a challenge, yes, but it is not impossible. Karya kathin hai, isi liye to karna yogya hai. Sadharan karya to sabhi karte hain. And if all of us got together in the recent past to make India polio free, as we have been talking about now for almost three years, Rotarians, the government of India, NGO, WHO, UNICEF, also with us today, business houses such as the Billas or Harshad Mehta or Rajendra Barwale, who is also here. And we know how it is to be done. We know that it can be done. We just have to go out and do it. Like that famous Nike ad which says, just do it. The polio experience will be invaluable because apart from the 1,700 Rotary Clubs in India, we have 3,000 plus, no, sorry, 4,000 Rotary Clubs in India. We have Rotaract Clubs and they are the young, can-do, idealistic, generation next people. People who believe that they can do anything. We have the Interact Clubs of school-going children as willing to help as anyone else. We Rotarians have our spouses, the ladies of inner wheel, and again, really Rotary's real strength. And when all of them come together, about four lakh plus committed souls in more than, more than 4,000 communities, big and small, urban and rural, north or south, east or west, and to this great force, add the corporate sector as well, who are now ensuring that they meet their corporate social responsibility goals. Add to the other NGOs like Pratham or Sulab, engaged in different aspects of literacy. Add perhaps further other people, citizens, leaders, who are all willing to take this initiative forward. Then it all begins to look more and more possible, more doable. In the 70s of the last century, India got rid of the scourge of smallpox, with Bihar being the last state to get it done. One month later, 30 days, 29 days away in fact, we will have got done with polio in India. Tell me then, having established our bona fides, why can't we succeed in making illiteracy in India, indeed the subcontinent, just a small paragraph in our history books in the next few years? 
And so now if you are ready to start, one question you might ask is, how do we go about it? What do we do? Where do we start? To which I have a simple answer. Start from where you are today. The government of India, led by the Honorable Sri Pallam Raju, have done a tremendous and a fantastic job. Like in polio eradication, it's the government which does the job with its access to its resources, its people. We, the volunteers, fill in the gaps, highlight the issues, and help the government solve them. When the government, Rotary, UNICEF, NGOs work together, one and one and one and one make not four, but they make 1,111. That's the mathematics that we must remember. Rotary South Asia has a simple way to move ahead. I, uh, uh, Shekhar, I call it really Shekhar's solution, and you'll be hearing more about it as we go along. It's called TEACH, an initiative. You know, T-E-A-C-H, where T stands for teacher support, ensuring that teachers are there. Sadly, teachers today are either not available or may not be remunerated enough. But sometimes, sadly again, they sublet their jobs also to others as part of their pay and do something else themselves. Can we especially train part-time sources, including senior citizens, Rotarians, mothers, volunteers, to take up the job of teachers as the regular ones are sometimes not available? The government needs to think out of the box to make this possible. And there are, you know, there's a great reason for hope as well. Permit me to share with you a few thoughts of Mr. Azim Premji of Karnataka, whose foundation is deep into the spread of literacy. He said recently, what we work in some of the most difficult districts of the country today, and we have 50 to 70 of our own people in each of these districts. They are fully committed in all these places that we run, and in all these places we are running voluntary learning forums for government school teachers. This means that teachers come to these learning sessions on their own. They spend their own money for transportation. They come from up to 30 kilometers away in difficult condition. They spend their own money on food. And they do all this on a holiday, usually a Sunday. Now, can we imagine this happening in the best of companies? How many employees of our companies will spend their holidays and their own money so that they can do their own jobs better? And how completely reverse is this experience of ours? in the notion of disinterested government employees. They, they work for the government, yes, but they're also deeply committed and they genuinely care. Our experience, uh, says Mr. Premji, is that between 12 to 18% of district teachers become part of such forums. And if you ask them why they do it, they will have always the same answer, which is that they want to learn so that they can teach better. Now, in a typical district, in a typical revenue district with 5,000 teachers, this implies that 600 to 800 teachers are engaged in such forums. I find this a great, great source of hope. People within the government school systems do have this type of commitment, and it can only mean that education will improve given time and sustained effort. And so, as I said, let's help teach the teachers and strengthen the government's hands. Next, E in TEACH stands for e-learning something that makes learning interactive, exciting, and brings students back to school. They will come. I'm telling you that they will come. We will need to develop special software to do this, language-specific, and then equip the schools in surprisingly innovative and economic ways. We rope in consultants like Tata Consultancy Services to help also. They will innovate to provide power, solar or otherwise, 
to run computers where the electricity or when it, the electricity fails. And you will hear a lot about all of these in the next two days over here. Ending with each student having something that we call an e-slate, costing perhaps rupees 2,000 to 3,000 or even less. It's beginning to happen. You will be hearing about it. We'll talk about it. And we'll take it home from here. Next, A&T stands for adult literacy. And as the saying goes, and as we have been hearing this morning, a literate mother means a literate family. Let's develop and encourage special school times, like late afternoons maybe, to teach our mothers. They love to learn. And a literate mother means literate children. It is not so with a literate father, unfortunately. And all of us here know this as well. C. The next letter in T stands for child development, for marginalized children, for children at risk, challenged children, of, or maybe the children of prostitutes, those with parents in jail, or children who are orphaned. We will be talking about all of these today and tomorrow. And finally, H stands for happy schools with clean classrooms, walls painted bright, a bulb if needed in place, airy and open windows, children sitting on desks but not on the floors, and schools having bathrooms, enough of them with enough water as well, and all cleaned up as well. <laughs> Maharashtra has started and is doing well in the e-schools. The other states, Governments who are already uh, on the job and their leaderships are keen to get moving. Orissa, Andhra, Rajasthan, Gujarat are all joining in. The Northeast states are already well into education with Kerala, as I have said, and they are among the most advanced areas, the Northeastern states, and they are very keen to embrace e-learning as well. As I come towards the end of my sharing of thoughts this morning, let me touch on something that Rotarians around the world have asked me, and that is, what great initiative will Rotary take up after we are done with polio? And I'd always reply, well, you tell me, what do you want to do? And the replies would be many, hunger alleviation, disease control, malaria, AIDS, literacy, leprosy even, water issues, and so on. And as I would think about it, while all of them would seem very important, I felt that if at least in South Asia, where all of the above issues are important, and they are prevalent as well, perhaps if we had our communities more literate, then we could make more, you know, more easily tackle all of the other issues as well all the other issues that people have been talking about, and more, including corruption, including India first every time, including putting South Asia on top. And so literacy, my brothers and sisters, is an, is an idea which I believe whose time has come. Before I close, because I have gone on longer than I thought I would, but I do get carried away when I'm talking about making South Asia literate, I would like to touch on two final things. One is to answer the question that, are we talking about literacy or are we talking about education? And our submission, Rotary's and I believe of the submission of most of us over here, is that literacy is the first step. Signing your name is the first step to literacy. Understanding figures to make sure that you are getting the right salary after your work and that you are getting your food rations right and at the right price. But education goes well beyond to make each of us a fuller, more complete human being, capable of facing the challenges of our lives and of managing our resources and our times in the best way for ourselves. And so, as we get along, schools are replaced by vocational training and by institutes of higher learning and skill transfers, all of which are done better with basic literacy in place. The final point is that you must be thinking is about is, well, all this is fine, whatever you are talking about, but what about the money? Where is the money coming from? And my answer to these valid thoughts are simple. A good initiative never, never gets stuck for want of resources. 
Believe me, first, the government, both at the central as well as the state governments, they have enough resources to help fund the e-learning software and to provide a few monitors to each school, fund innovative ways to harness solar power and to keep your initiatives going. Then the corporates are willing to spend, as I have said earlier, 2% of their net profits of CSR. Even if they spend half of that, the final figures could add up to hundreds of crores of rupees. And that is not all. I expect that the Rotarians and our Rotary Foundations to be soon funding the building of simple schools and of repairing them as well, officially. And then there are the affected people, the public themselves. When they see what you are doing and are working to change their lives, their future, they will all join in and it will be, you know, it will go beyond your wildest dreams. And so come on, my brothers and sisters, let's go. Let's prove again that we were alone, but we came to the end of the day, but people came and came and came. Thank you.